You're listening to episode 331. Welcome to Transforming Missions Podcast, providing you with insights and resources you need to lead a movement of Jesus followers. Have you ever tried not thinking about the future? I'll invite you, just go ahead and try. (laughs) Try that little experiment and let us know how it goes. Don't think about the future. (laughs) When you say that, the first thing I want to do is think about the future, of course. And why is that? Because we're hardwired for hope. And it all starts with our beliefs. So let's start with a little true and false quiz for a moment. Tell me true or false, and I'm including you, our listeners, in this. I have four statements I'm going to share with you. And just think for yourself, are these true or are they false for you? The future will be better than the present. I have the power to make it so. There are many paths to my goals. None of the paths are free from obstacles. Sarah, those are all true for people with hope, aren't they? They are all true for people who have hope. I think about it. People have hope are resourceful. They're realistic because they anticipate a plan for difficulties, for the setbacks, the disappointments, and they're also resilient. If one path is a dead end, it doesn't go anywhere, it's no problem. There's another way to get there. Is that what we're talking about? That is what we're talking about. As christ centered leaders, these characteristics of hope bring staying power and momentum And that's different than wishful thinking. Wishful thinking isn't realistic. It doesn't anticipate. It doesn't plan. And when it's wishful thinking, you're not confronting the obstacles or the setbacks. It can just do the opposite. Wishful thinking isn't resilient. If disappointment comes, we just stop. The path to the to the wish closes off and it's all over. We tried that once before and it didn't work. (laughs) I mean, that's the way it ends up. We've never heard that before. (laughs) (laughs) So if you haven't figured it out by now, we're starting a new series all focused around hope. And here's one definition of hope. Hope is where transcendence meets reason and caution meets passion. Part of what I appreciate about that definition, especially for leaders, is this. There's integration. Oh, integrity. I can't imagine you focusing on that. (laughs) I am that predictable. The integrity is that our thoughts and feelings are integrated in that definition. Thoughts react to feelings, respond to thoughts. It's a dance of hope. (laughs) Okay, Sarah, this may be the only time you ever hear me say this. Let's dance. (laughs) Let's step into the dance. (laughs) Tim just said, let's step into the dance. So as you consider the future, your future, whatever that might look like for you, our listeners, some of you will think about the next week or the next month. Others of you are experiencing significant shifts, a new church, a new home, new people, and that will take longer to navigate. Given what you're facing on the calendar in your relationships, the church, and life in general, here's my big question that Tim's going to get us started and breaking down a bit. What is your vision for the future? So let me remind you that this isn't wishful thinking. So let's start here. As a leader, what do you need to do today to get where you want to go? And and maybe take a step back. Where do you want to go? <laughs> where where are you heading? So before you say I don't know to Tim's question, let me offer this. And I just said it. Start with the end in mind. If the congregation you're leading is focused on the mission and your goal is to help people understand and claim their place in the mission, what do you need to do today to get there? And this can be a small step, right? It's not a huge thing to do. Absolutely. So thinking about your example, if I was starting with that, I might begin by seeking to understand how the church expresses the mission. 
And there you go again, starting where people are at. (laughs) So let me also point out what you did there, Tim. And you said it. Thinking about the example, your thoughts are looking ahead and telling you what you need to do today to get where you're going in the future. But it's not just about thoughts. I mean, because our emotions give us energy to act and then to sustain the effort, that's part of the dance, isn't it? Exactly. That's exactly the dance. So can I borrow another line from Shane Lopez? He says that hope is the work of the heart and the head. Hope happens when our rational selves meet our emotional selves. So I'm hearing two things in what you've just offered. You name for leaders why it's not wishful thinking. Rational and emotional self come together as a dance. You're also pointing to the fact that we can choose hope. That when someone or something ignites possibility inside you, your thoughts and your feelings begin the dance, and you have a choice. And part of that choice is hope. Yeah. As leaders, sometimes we think hope can be shared once. We want to inspire people to act, and that's a good thing. The reality is, though, hope is a choice, and it's a series of choices. The decision to choose hope is ongoing. Hope happens moment by moment through our choices. So why I asked what's one step you can take today is because that's your first choice, and then there's going to be another choice. So hope happens when our thoughts and our feelings come together to temper our aversion to loss and actively pursue what's possible. When we choose hope, we define what matters to us most. So if we go back to the vision or goal we named a little earlier about a church that's focused on the mission and helping people understand and claim their place in the mission, then the choices we make over a period of time will lead to the embodiment of that goal. As as a leader, you can't command it or wish it into being. It happens with the choices along the way. Right. A leader helps people make the choice to hope. And by choosing hope themselves and then helping people to navigate the hope, guess what? They're experiencing hope. (laughs) So I'm going to go where I usually go when we talk about hope. When you say navigate hope, are you referring to the hope cycle? Yes. So we started with our current reality. What or how does the church express the mission? To get to the goal, there are going to be different pathways. To embody the goal, people will need to claim the agency to participate in moving towards the future with hope. Maybe it would help to break down the parts of the hope cycle again. Will you start us off in naming what the hope cycle is? The first element of the hope cycle is a, is the goal. It's where you're going. It's what you want to achieve. This is the idea of where you, of what you want to do. Sometimes there isn't um, total clarity, but it's a general idea. So you start there where you're going. What you might consider about your goal is this. Is it something you can come back to over and over again? Um, Hope comes from the goals that matter most to us, the things that we return to again and again, the things that fill our minds with the picture of the future, the things that bring about the passion to move forward. That's where we're going. That's the hope that we set out before us to reach. Yes, and there's a helpful image of the hope cycle, and I'll drop that on the show notes page at transformingmission.org forward slash 331 if you want to see that. And as you think about what Tim just offered, let me offer an example. As we were planning this episode, Tim is packing to move to West Virginia, and I came across a picture I made, and I didn't come across the picture. Tim came across the picture I made of us reaching 100 episodes. That seems like the distant past at this point, but when we reached 100 episodes, it seemed like it was a distant future when we started. Today, you're listening to episode 331. When Tim shared 
a picture of the picture. Sorry, that's kind of meta. My response was, episode 500, here we come. (laughs) Now, that's a goal that brings hope. It's a goal that matters to both of us. It's something that we will come back to again and again. It's something that I can see, the number 500 in large, bold letters filled in it with different cover images from the podcast episodes. Do I or does Tim know what all of those episodes between 331 and 500 are going to be? No. But I know that the focus and the content for the episode emerges given the context and priorities around us and the conversations between us. I can also see us online recording the episodes and our back and forth banter. That's all happening within the hope cycle. There's agency there, there's a goal there, and there are different pathways. And Sarah, other things that I uncovered in my great packing was that we've been talking about this hope cycle for a long time because episodes 50 through 55 or something were part of this hope cycle. So we'll link to those on the show notes page as well, because I think we did. I think we went into more depth about each one of them. So that's the first element of the hope cycle. That's goal, where we're going. And you offered a great example of a goal since you used me as the example. (laughs) Sorry, it was a great example. What's the next part of that cycle? So I, I alluded to it. And the second part of the hope cycle is agency. And what agency is about, do you perceive that you have the ability to shape your life, to make choices? Think of those questions that we started this episode off with the true and false. If you're an agent, for our purpose, you can make things happen or stop things from happening and take responsibility for moving things forward. This is also the place of being a self-starter or being persistent. You might think about agency being the author of your life, but there's another aspect to the hope cycle that we need to take into account as well. Tim, will you tell us about what that one is? Sure. We're in this cycle. We're on a path. So we've got pathways. And this is where keeping your eyes and actions on the goal, that you're following a path to get to the goal. Now, there will be multiple paths because obstacles will come up. and They'll stop you at any time. This is where you need to make those choices. So you might have to shift lanes on the path. You may have to change pace on the path. But the pathways help us get focused and help us monitor our progress. So let me say it this way, Sarah, when you're on the path and you've got some place to go and there's something in the way, you don't sit down and say, I'm not going to get there. Right. So those three elements, the goal, agency, and pathways are a constant feedback loop to the current reality. Remember again what we mentioned about hope being about integrating thoughts and feelings. So when your thoughts tell you this isn't possible and your gut is saying, keep going, you might need to slow the pace down. You might need to proceed with caution, maybe after a little bit of testing or some conversations, but you move forward. The last thing I'd offer is this. All three of these elements need to be strong to keep hope going. So if you're finding that one is weak, seek to strengthen it. One element of the hope cycle can diminish hope. So keep your goal focused, your agency strong, and your pathways clear, and you'll continue to facilitate hope in your life and in your leadership. So you just said in your life and leadership, that's... It sure is intentionally broad. So if I may say it this way, the hope cycle can apply to any and every aspect of your life, family, church, work, hobbies, career goals, personal development, community, you put your own in there. Since I've learned about the hope cycle, it's a way of thinking about how to reach the goal of where I'm going. It keeps me focused. So it works for people of all ages and circumstances. Hope doesn't discriminate. And hope is not just wishful thinking. You can make hope happen. Yeah, it's 
it is an intentional choice. And we hope, sorry to use the word in a different way, that illustrating those three elements, you see how it's so far from wishful thinking. There's a lot of intentionality in hope. And part of what I find so empowering about hope is that each one of those things are a choice that we can make. So thank you for making it clear that it applies to every aspect of our life. So if you're looking for hope, name your goal, claim the agency, and identify your path. It's implied, but I'll state this clearly here too, all of those are in relationship to your current reality. You'll probably hear us say that over and over again. That's what differentiates hope from wishful thinking. So... We've introduced you to hope today and given you, hopefully, some things to think about and maybe urged you on to set a goal and think about your current thinking on hope. Tim, what wisdom would you like to add as we wrap up this episode? Well, Sarah, not to confuse things, but It's not by accident that we talk about hope being a pathway for making disciples in a congregation. It's Um, an intentional choice. (laughs) It's an intentional choice. So using the hope cycle and putting together hospitality, offering Christ, practicing the faith, engaging the community, using the hope cycle in any one of those areas, man, we can transform the world. Not we by ourselves, but because the love that we know in the living God that we share with the community, that we share with one another, we share with the larger world, there'll be obstacles. There'll be things that we never even dreamed would be in the way. Um, But because we are people of a preferred future, of a future with hope, uh, God's preferred future, um, we don't have to give up. We can find a way to get there and be who God created us to be. And one day look back and just say, look what God has done in our midst. And then we can celebrate. That's the kind of thing that comes to my heart, not just my head, but comes to my heart when I think about hope, the hope cycle. Thank you. For those reminders, Tim, and thank you for joining us for this first episode in the series, A Future with Hope. As a reminder, you can find show notes for this episode at transformingmission.org forward slash 331. And we'll link on that page, both to the image of the hope cycle, as well as the previous episodes that we did, where we introduced the hope cycle to our listeners. And I just feel the need to, to say this. They were some of our first episodes. Yes, as you were. As you can tell, we've come a long way. So don't be critical of those. Okay, now, remember, who you are is how you lead. Bye for now. <laughs>